On the coldest day so far of the winter of 2023, I have to say that all the orchids are inside with the exception of many orchids that have to live outside, can live outside and can tolerate the temperatures. And today I figured seeing as I can't play with my other orchids, I might as well use the space that I have in the blooming alley to check on all my Rapiculus lalias. And seeing as I pulled a lot of them that are doing something, give you an update on them. That includes watching out for scale, doing preventative treatments with my garlic alcohol. So I appreciate that you're here. It warms my heart. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Good to have you here. So I've been doing my preventative treatment on the Rapiculus Lelias and in front of you we have Lelia Papstii. I'm going to try and stay as upbeat with my voice as possible except that when it gets cold it sort of gets a little bit more subdued. My cadence isn't exactly all happy and I don't know what you know the whole body just sort of wants to curl up in a ball like a hedgehog and that may happen to my voice. I'm fine <laughs> in case that happens and if you hear any teeth chattering well it is a cold 12 degrees today at noon <laughs> so no way am I bringing other orchids outside it's also an overcast day and quite blustery <laughs> making everything feel even colder anywho back to <laughs> Lelia Papstii Right here, I've got two new growths that are maturing. Now, they are not the size of what we know from before. You see the previous bulbs are nice and tall. And here I have another growth and they all look a little bit stout and didn't mature to a full size as their potential could be. That's probably because I've been very, very reluctant to water while these growths were growing. Of course, they always got a trickle of water. I've been simulating the dew. I prefer to make sure that at least I get growths that will produce roots than no growths at all because you can see in the background here, maybe, hopefully, right there. That was a growth that was trying to grow earlier on and it failed. And I believe that's because I got water in there. So when the other growth here started to push out, I thought, yeah, hold back, let it develop. We need the roots. And let me just, while we're at it, make sure that I look and see that everything here is according to what it should be. I know that I've already brushed up on some of these with my garlic alcohol, but you know, if you're not sure, then there's no harm, no foul to do it again. Okay, so that would be the Pops TI. I am pleased with the progress of this one. At least two new growths will give me two new root system, blooms or not. All the other ones I did not pull today, they're just not doing anything. This is the Kautskiana I got from Anonymous. It's a big Lelia here, you can see quite tall. I was very surprised because I did have a Kautskiana, but I bought this one because the label said Neo Kautskiana. And if you're new to my channel, I am kind of on a quest to collect all the Rapicula Lelia species. So when I saw Neo Kautskiana, I didn't have that. I have the Kautskiana. Then I saw the size of this orchid and I thought, oh, well, that's a new one. But you can see my two new growths here actually are reflecting the size of the Kautskiana that I already have. So I don't know what steroids this one was on before she came to my collection. Maybe I can replicate it. But the first port of call, once again, get yourself some new growths in your climate, get yourself some roots, and then we can work on size. I'm very happy to report that my Neo Kautskiana or Kautskiana is doing well. Thank you, Anonymous. Ah, it gives me great pleasure. Next up is my Sangiloba 2.0. My original Sangiloba was eaten by a puppy when he first arrived on the patio, <laughs> which was very unfortunate, shock horror, but thankfully I managed to get a replacement. She's not growing as vigorously as my first Sangiloba, but she is growing. I think that this is her kind of natural growth habit to not have the leaves bolt upright. So this is not wilting. She has roots in the pot. My tug test tells me that she's not quite rooted in. But here I want to address the topic of my pots being oversized. In case you are familiar with Rapiculus lelius, you're probably thinking they are way over potted. And yes, normally they should be in a pot that fits them super snugly 
to the point that they are so pot bound that they would break their own pot. However, Rapiculus Lelias also do not like to have their roots disturbed at all. And for that reason, I have put them in oversized pots. And this is where I'm heading, where I'm thinking my Lelias will be able to stay in the media, which is inorganic in the pot for at least eight to 10 years. If nothing goes wrong in their culture and no rot kicks in, etc. The point being, do not disturb Rapiculus Lelias. And my conclusion is, well then, they go into oversized pots. My media is inorganic. Problem solved. Do not disturb. Okay, this is the best way that I could think of to not disturb them. Anyway, Sanguiloba is doing well. I'm just waiting for roots. This growth has matured over the winter months. We're going to go down a pot size now. Here is my recent newcomer. This is my Millery crossed with long keeps that came from Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones. I'm hoping now with a little bit of sun we are actually able to see something. I may need to up the exposure a little bit. Let's see if that works. Okay, so this one was potted up. Slightly smaller pot because a slightly smaller Lelia as well. But in the proportion of things, her pot should be at least half the size smaller again. But I explained my reasoning. So she has settled in nicely. She is not rooted in. I do still have all her old media around her because the roots were more important than me picking media off because once again, do not disturb the roots. So she is not rooted in, but I like the progress of this new growth right here. And I think if I look around the other side, there was another new growth that was coming out or starting to mature. I'm not exactly sure if that's the one right here. It was a smaller new growth, so not 100% sure. But I know that it had two new growths and now I can't see them. Here we are, sorry about that. Right here. And I'm seeing that there is an issue at the tip of that growth. I wonder if I got water in it. Let me see if I can zoom you in. If not, I'll insert a picture. There is a problem with that new growth there. I have had some thrips issues earlier in 2022, and this may just be water damage, but it could also be a bit of thrips, even though it's far too cold for thrips. But this growth was progressing nicely, and why it's gone black on me, I do not know. Let me take a picture of that so I can assess it better on a bigger screen. It looks like something has nibbled on it, which is a shame. Anywho, here we have Entsfeldsii. Now, this one lost the lead in the back here. It was not rooted in when I put in the bamboo skewers, but I can now take the bamboo skewers out because normally I do not like using bamboo skewers at all because, of course, it's organic and it just starts to break whatever. But at the time, I do not want to have any kind of support on my Rapiculus Lelias in the pots. They don't need it. And I didn't want to put in a support that looked permanent that I couldn't remove. So I opted for bamboo skewers because eventually with the rotting out of the material, I can then remove them and not have something there that this orchid would not need long term. But we have here and this lead, fantastic new growth starting. It's got a little sheath. She did bloom for me a while back, so I'm hopeful about this one. This one's doing all right, and I keep seeing little things. Now that I've been looking for scale, I'm seeing things everywhere. I don't know if, if it's the same for you. Once you start to see one spot, it's almost like every spot becomes something suspicious. <laughs> but she's rooted in so we can take the skewers off, which is nice because for me, they are an eyesore. There you go. That looks better. So she is beautifully and fully rooted in. Now, of course, she is, you know, starting to get up against the edge of the pot. But back when I was potting her up, I had this lead right here, which has since, you know, completely desiccated. Oh, well, again, we're going to have to wait and see where she throws out another lead and hopefully grows back into the pot. Moving on to Brigeri. And yes, sorry, that sounded like my, it was a heavy pot and it is kind of because everything here is filled with lava rock ceramics and large lava rock in these pots are at the bottom for crocking. So very large lava rock for crocking. It is a semi-hydro setup. I'm sorry, I didn't mention that before. So semi-hydro, large lava rock for crocking. 
ceramis or akadama depending on the time that I had ceramis or didn't I then substituted with akadama and grit and on the top dressing here is just smaller lava rock so Brigeri is doing fabulously but I can also see because now I'm wary after the long eaves and the millery cross I'm just watching my new growths there's one right down here and this one right here in the main front lead and it also has a little sign of something was trying to get at it but wasn't successful and it spared me my growth sorry for the jiggle of the camera there that's great so at least that one's progressing and this one here also has leads going in other directions but they're not showing signs of growth see there's another lead so that's okay it's doing fine at least I've got two growing maybe the other ones will pick up this one was not potted up for the longest time it was an ICU I'm really pleased to see the progress on the Brigieri moving on to the Guaense which is fabulous so pleased to see this one growing it wasn't much of an orchid when I got her you can see that's all I had was in the back here and then she grew this bulb and now she's growing a much nicer more solid looking growth right there obviously not rooted in but that new growth is definitely going to produce some nice roots i'm loving the progress of this one and this is all happening during the winter months keeping the media as dry as possible without losing the semi-hydro effect but not leaving them sopping wet now it is raining on the patio right now it was forecast but ideally if the temperatures were a little bit more favorable I would be putting these Rapiculus Lelias out to get some of the rain however I am not confident with the low temperatures at night even though they can tolerate extreme low temperatures as in to some degree freezing I have 36 Rapiculus Lelias I am not quite sure who can handle it and who can't but all across the board they can handle my five degrees Celsius lows and that is why they're all staying under cover and then based on what I see on their root system and how they're performing how the pseudobulbs if they're staying plump based on that either they get a trickle of water or they don't very happy with Guayense I cannot express just how happy I am yay <laughs> here is Lelia Flava Solina now this one has never bloomed for me she had some scale issues leading into fall which I dealt with so she hasn't been affected by scale since then thankfully she's going to be losing this leaf here that was the worst of the bunch with the scale but I have to say that considering when this happened I thought it was so bad I thought she was going to lose her leaf so much sooner but hey she didn't but Flava Solina I'm very cautious with her because again I don't want to lose any of my Rapiculus Lelius especially the ones that have tiny structures I find them much more difficult to pull through once they've been stressed and her infestation was really really bad so I'm very happy to see these little growths right here on this lead two of them I know they're smaller but they will give me roots as well and she has had no more scale since that one time you know I always look at my Rapiculus Lelius during the morning coffee rounds and I see them from the front and the leaves are so stout so fleshy and strong that scale doesn't come or show through until one day I was looking around and I saw the back of the leaves were infested with fluff and I was like oh my goodness I almost came too late so she's pulled through nicely I am only being very cautious with her on the watering front because normally Rapiculus Lelias will grow their roots once the growths have completed but then also when spring comes when temperatures are a little warmer those that are growing roots right now shouldn't be watered too much either because what they're doing is going down they're taking the opportunity that the temperatures are cold they're not burning their roots they're going down into the crevices if they were out in nature going into the darkest shadiest more humid environment cooler environment so that when the warm temperatures come they are ready then to absorb water so watering just because there's signs of roots because it's cold is counterproductive they would rot out very very easily but I'm pleased to see this on my flower Solina 
Here's my Cattleya honey, and I'm gonna say Cattleya because that's how I bought her, even though she is a Lelia in my books. She is a Rapiculus Lelia, by the way. Yeah, I do apologize if you are a connoisseur of Rapiculus Lelias, and I'm calling everybody Lelia Lelia. They are, for the most part, now Cattleyas. Forgive me. I'm old school. It's difficult for me to change. And I don't know what it is. I just love the name Lelia more than I like the name Cattleya. So there's that. <laughs> Anyway, this is the honey which I got from Anonymous and I want to say thank you so much once again to everybody who has gifted me my Rapiculus Lelias, knowing that I'm trying to collect all the species. And she is doing fantastically. She came as a wonderful orchid, beautiful quality from Curleen Orchidin back in May of 2022. And I kept her in her pot for the longest time. I didn't want to stress her out while she was acclimating. And then eventually I potted her up into the same classic setup that I have for all my Rapiculus Lelias. And you can see there's Ceramis on the top and she is fully rooted in. She came with a great root system, but that is never a guarantee that when you repot an orchid that the root system would hold. This one had no issues whatsoever. And she, for the winter, is maturing this growth right here and is growing roots. So I'm a little bit conservative on watering. And when I do water this one, for example, she is on the shelf facing away from the light. When I water her, I water around this edge and then rely on the wicking material to wick the water. As much water as I put into the pot, which is not much, just a little bit of a spray, pretending to be the dew, and allow the wicking to take place and then the roots can find the water if that is what they choose to do. But yay, and here comes the sun, a little bit. Very pleased to see this growth doing so, so well. Let's see, let's turn you this way. There. I hope that is visible now with the sun coming out. No complaints, just a little bit of warmth on the hands. I'll just give her another turn and see if I see anything that looks suspicious, scale suspicious, you know. She has another lead in the front here that's not active at the moment. Oh, maybe, maybe at the end of the year we can see some hernae blooms. I am super happy to see this orchid do so well. This is my Manticaria. She was for the longest part just these little bulbs in the back and it was very concerning that she may not pull through. But then she grew a very skinny, very shy little growth right here. What if, what's this? Okay, no, you're dead. Just checking. So this was very shy, tentative attempt, but boy did the root system develop from that one growth. And now look what she's done since then. And it took approximately six months to get this growth to mature. So I want to see when I peel off the sheath here. Not that I want to peel off sheaths of my Rapiculus Lelias once they're in my collection because I like to keep a track of which bulbs were fresh when they arrived, when I've cleaned them, and which growths are then mine in my care. And that I can determine by leaving the sheaths on. Besides considering harsh conditions, these sheaths protect the orchid. But look at this growth. Isn't this wonderful? Ah, oh, she's living her life here and I'm enjoying seeing that. No new roots from her just yet. What we see here are the roots from... Oh, hang on a second. No, that's a root from the back growth. So we still have another root system to come. She is going from strength to strength. That's all I can say. She's fully rooted in the pot. And once again, this pot looks oversized, but that root system has already filled the pot. And then bit by bit by bit, I'm getting my Rapiculus Lelias to be snug, tight, and well, let's see if they are capable of breaking these heavy duty PVC pots. Moving on to pot sizes, that might be a little bit more conducive to what the normal pot size for Rapiculus Lelia is sort of recommended. But this orchid was in this pot when she was a quarter of the size, also in that sense over potted. But it's been four years and I have no intention of potting her up or anything like that. Of course, bar no issues at all happening while she is in her pot. Then I would have to intervene if there were issues. So this is Lelia Sincorana and she was starting to show scale on her. You can see the damage maybe on this leaf right there. 
maybe. And back there. So she had a full treatment this morning. There were some already also in the apex of the leaf there. But she is growing a new growth right here. La, sunshine. So there's a growth. But she's not as vigorous as the other one. This is my OG Sincorana, one of the first ones I've got. And no, she's never bloomed for me, but it's the first time I've also left her outdoors in the winter. I was always a bit dubious about Sincorana tolerating such cold temperatures. This is the first winter she's outside. And she's holding on, doing nicely. I'm loving that growth right there. But you see how and when they fill their pots. <laughs> This is what it's supposed to look like on a Rapiculus Lelia, not the XL pots I just showed you. But maybe in four years time, what looks like an excessive big pot will have this visual as well. That's my hope anyway. Here's my other Sincorana. This is the variety Cerula. Unfortunately, when I pulled her from the shelf, I snagged the top leaf with the shelf above. So I've dislodged the orchid a little bit in her pot. Not good at all. Hope nothing goes wrong with her because she never really was rooted in and she was just starting to get solid. So I'm not going to be tipping her too much, but you can see there's two new growths. She's busy. It's wonderful to see and you can see the one root right there, which is super, super important, that root. And I just hope that me bringing her off the shelf was not going to give me any kind of negative outcomes here. Not good. Mad at myself. But anyway, see how this root is suspended in the air? Yeah, but it's probably not good anymore in either. No, it was a dead root, so that's fine. But anyway, she did show some signs of scale, so I had, I had to bring her out of the shelf. Oh dear. Silly, silly me. Anyway, we're going to focus on the positive. Beautiful two new growths coming. Here we have little Giuliani, beautiful one. Seems to be an easy goer, easy grower, bloomed for me as well. Very, very quickly since I got it in my collection. Now it's gonna be a little bit difficult to see, but let me do my best here. There's a new growth coming right here by the tag, right there. And another tiny one right here by the two roots coming down. Yep, she is doing fabulously. Considering that she is out here in the cold, she settled into my climate and into her pot without any headaches at all. Super happy. The cutest little blooms on this one. They all have cute blooms. But you know, some of them, that they just surprise you. <laughs> and here's one I'm super proud of. Doing much better than it ever has in my collection. A happy bloomer. This is Lelia Harpophila, and we are already showing signs of buds coming out of the sheath. Comme ça. That's awesome. She lives outside now. She used to always live inside, but I've left her outside. Even though she was starting on another new growth, which is a first, right out of the gate. Even though this one hasn't finished blooming yet, I've already got another new growth. And I'm hoping that's a good sign that she is actually now settled in. And it's one of those little continuous little pocket rocket, continuous growers. Because, my goodness, my little stocking fillers here. That's what I used to call them, little stocking fillers for Christmas. If you know somebody that loves Rapiculus Lelias, these make ideal stocking fillers. Because they're tiny, cute, and they'll bring a smile to anybody's face. And despite being outside, this growth has absolutely no issues. The sheath... Up here, maybe you can see that. There, look at the size of it. It's going to be the same size as the predecessor. Love me, my Harpophila. Happy days. And I have one more to show you, even though it is not a Rapiculus Lelia, but oh, so cute. We hardly see my Dendrobium speciosum, my Tsuru. A month ago, I was like, why am I losing my variegation? With this one, when the variegation of the newest growth start to go green, that means there's a new growth somewhere. But this lead is not showing the new growth, except it's back here. I hope you can see that. 
And this is one where I was thinking, oh, you know what? I should have put this one in the center of the pot. But back in the day when I was potting orchids up, I used to take the main lead and let it then grow into the center of the pot. As we can see, it's doing here now. However, since it's been potted up, it also started to create, you see this growth right here scrunched up against the tag. Yeah, I never moved the tag because I don't want to disturb the roots. But this is what happens when you don't pot your orchid up in the middle and it starts to shoot out a new direction of growth. But still, we'll be working with this for as long as we can. But that is so cute to see. It's the first time she's overwintering outside. I have never had this orchid outside, but I've never had her bloom either. So she's in Lekka and Semi-Hydro, and I figured, you know what? Speciosum are tough. So let's see how tough you are, little one. Seeing as she's strong, lots of roots in the pot, I figured I would risk it. And so far, so good. New growth. Now I know. One less little section of real estate to be occupied indoors. I have re-established the status quo. They're all back in their place. The ones that I didn't showcase today, as mentioned earlier. They're not doing anything that I could point out that is remarkable. But yeah, I put them all back the way they are supposed to be. Especially also with the direction that they were in before I moved them off their shelf. That is super important because when the sun does hit them, they have a special growth habit and that needs to be respected. I just love seeing them all lined up. Mind you, there's two or three in there that are not Rapiculus Lelias, but they have the same culture. Seeing them all like this makes me super, super happy. And we have another couple of months to go before the temperatures warm up and whoa. I hope the next update will also showcase the other ones starting to push new growths. That would be amazing. Now, I am going to love and leave you. Thank you so very, very much for watching. If you have any questions about Rapiculus Lelias, I have made several care videos, which I will link in the description. But if you have any questions, please use the comments. Not just use them, abuse them. I'll be happy to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day. On that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. And brr, I'm going to go inside and have me some more hot chocolate. Take care. Bye.